Welcome fans to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host Jim Sella in studio with Jay Dash and Big Easy. We got our prospect Chuck coming for you this week. Dash, who do we got going? We are going with the Atlanta Braves second baseman, recently turned outfielder, Jose Peraza. And then for the starting pitcher, we're going to go with Brian Johnson of the Boston Red Sox. The good old Jose, he's down there playing for the good old Gwinnett Braves. He's Gwinnett to win it. Please believe. He's the number 32 prospect on MLB.com, and he's ranked number 54 by Baseball America. Where do you rank him, 32 or 54, Dash? I say I don't rank him as high as number 32. I'd go closer to 54 range. And I'll tell you why here in a minute. But he is actually the Braves' number one overall prospect. There's no doubt about that. The Braves' system is kind of weak right now. He was signed back in 2010 out of Venezuela. Now, Venezuela produces MLB players like no other. Jose Altuve is from Venezuela. Venezuela got nothing on Cuba. <laughs> well, probably not. Francisco Cervelli is from Venezuela as well. No. Please believe. Oh, yeah? Did you ever hear him talk? Nope. I know he likes soccer. Peraza, he's 21 years old, 6 foot, 180 pounds. Now, he grades out as a 60 in his hit tool. His power tool is just a 30. His run tool is a 75. That's top of the line. His arm's a 50. His fielding is a nice 60. Overall, MLB.com ranks him a 55. Power hurts his overall a little bit. He made his Major League debut in 2011. Um... You know, had 235 at bats, 281 average. That was solid. You know, 66 hits, 22 RBIs. There's 28 stolen bases, man. Yeah. That's what I said. That's it, where the speed's coming from. Yeah, the best part of his game is definitely speed. But you look at the scouting grades I just mentioned, and he's really been playing like that throughout his minor league career. Those scouting grades are dead on. He steals a ton of bases. He hits yes. for a good average. Look, in 2012, he played in rookie ball as well, hit 296, had 25 stolen bases, 206 at-bats. And then he played his entire 2013 season in single A, hit 288 with 64 stolen bases and 448 at-bats. Beast. Yeah. So Backed it up last year, too. Still with 60 stolen bases, 339 average. And a that was a great year. Yeah, and a career high 79 runs. That was between single A and double A. So he, he's starting to do it. His stock is rising. Correct. But the one thing he doesn't do is he doesn't take a walk. Just 91 walks. He's had 1,599 at bats. But he does have that 305 average with a 348 on base. He doesn't hit for power, just seven home runs. See, I, I don't think prospects are looking to walk in A or double A anyway. They they want to hit the ball. They want to make plays. So I don't go by walk numbers in, in the minor leagues or don't mean too much to me. That's not going to diminish. Listen, man, the best players, players can, can take a walk, though. Yeah, but well, maybe he just wants to shine, and he don't want to get walks. Well, he Doesn't I mean, mean he can't he, take them. He definitely can learn to take them, but he's going to want to take them. That'll help him see better pitches. He'll hit for a higher average, and then he'll get his on-base percentage even higher, maybe even up close to 400 at some point if he can start taking a walk. But you look this season, he's doing the same thing. He's hitting 299, a 331 on base, not showing too much power, just two home runs. But he scored 28 runs, already stole 17 bases. But look, just 12 walks. Still, he doesn't K a lot either. Just 24 Ks and 241 at-bats this season. That's impressive. But really, this guy has the tools to be a leadoff hitter, but he's not the prototypical leadoff hitter that most teams want at the top of their lineup. They want those guys that can take a walk, man. I'm telling you, that, that gives you a high on base percentage. And out of guys that steal bases, when you can have a high on base percentage, your stolen bases go up, your runs go up, and your average will go up too because you're going to start seeing better pitches. But he does have excellent hand-eye coordination, and that's why he doesn't strike out that much. Right. But like I said, the one flaw in his game is that walk. If he could start taking walks, he'd really turn into an elite leadoff hitter in the big leagues. Now, 
like I, I just gave you his stats for this season, but even more recently, he's been on a tear. He's hitting 372 over his last 10 games. He's 8 for 12 with four runs and an RBI in his last three games. So his bat is ready for the bigs, and he's ready to hit at the top of the Atlanta Braves lineup. But here's the problem. He began his career as a shortstop because he's a very good fielder, but the Braves have Andrelton Simmons, who is one of the best fielders in all of baseball, mm. if not the best mm. fielder. So what they did, they moved Peraza over to second base last season so they could have the combination of Simmons and Peraza long term, which sounds really good. But the problem is they brought over Jace Peterson from San Diego too. This was a prospect, not as high of a prospect as Peraza, but he had some potential. They brought him in. He's having an excellent season at second base. So they didn't want to mess with anything there. So what they did, they're, they're moving Peraza to center field now. Now, if you look, they got Mabin in center field right now in the bigs, and he's been very good this season. Cameron Mabin is actually having a breakout season for the Atlanta Braves. But the thing is, Peraza's defense is so good that he's going to be able to cover a ton of ground in center field. He just needs to learn how to play the position here in the minors, and then he'll be ready to come up. They can move Mabin to left field because they have that Cunningham there now. They really don't have three good outfielders. They have Marcakis, Mabin, and they need one more. That can be Peraza. And then you look at this lineup, man, you got Pierzynski, a catcher, is having a great season. They have one of the better backup catchers, at least defensively, in Christian Bethencourt. And then you got a franchise player at first base in Freddie Freeman. Simmons, a franchise player at shortstop. Jace Peterson's having a breakout season for the Braves at second base. They made that deal with the Dodgers to bring over Uribe, Juan Uribe, and he's hitting very well with the Braves so far. He's a gold glove third baseman, so they made the move there that they needed to make. And then I just mentioned the outfield. I mean, this team, there's nothing spectacular about it outside of Freeman maybe, but they're all good baseball players. And really, if you look last season, they got rid of who? Justin Upton they got rid of. Uh, Jason Hayward they got rid of. Right. Melvin Upton they got rid of. Their closer even. Yeah, they got rid of their closer. But if you look, all those guys they got rid of, they struck out a ton. Now, if you look at this lineup they got today, these guys don't strike out that much. And it's really helped them stay in this race along with uh, Shelby Miller pitching like an ace. But they're sitting at 34 and 35 this season. So they're still in the race. So they want to get Peraza up here. And it was a good move to move him to the outfield. And... Uh, they should have a decent lineup moving forward. Now they have Shelby Miller, like I said, pitching like an ace. Julio Tehran and Alex Wood haven't been pitching as good as Braves fans hoped this season. But if they can get back to pitching like they were last season, you got Miller, Tehran, and Alex Wood as a 1-2-3. Now you might have to do something at the deadline if you stay in this race to get a couple more pitchers in here for the back end of your rotation. But, I mean, this, this team can stay in it, and Jose Peraza is definitely someone that can help them out. And he's a guy, like I said, this team doesn't strike out much. Another thing they don't do is hit for much power. Freeman's the only one with double-digit home runs right now. And Peraza is not going to help that category out either. So they're they're going to have diminished power numbers this season. But they're not going to strike out a lot. So they're going to be on base and they're going to be all over the bases. So they may be able to stay in this race as long as they can get that pitch in the turnaround. It's all about on-base percentage nowadays. Power isn't is coveted as it once was. So Jose Peraza, I expect him to be called up as soon as he learns the center field position because his bat's all ready for the big leagues. And he should be able to give them a spark at the top of the lineup eventually. But when he comes up, you may see him bat in the number eight part of the order early until he proves he can hit in the bigs. And then you'll see him move up to probably in the future, he'll be batting first, I believe. All that speed, he's got to be. But the only thing, like I said, he that on-base percentage is low, so he's not the prototypical number one hitter teams look for. And then you got Brian Johnson, starting pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. He is ranked number 92 on MLB.com, and he's ranked number 82 by Baseball America. He was the first-round pick in 2012 by the Boston Red Sox, pick number 31 overall. Now, this guy played for Florida. He went to college, played for Florida part of that Florida team that made three consecutive World Series appearances. And he was a big part College of the rotation. World Series? Yeah. Yes. Was Jameis Winston on those teams? He played for Florida State. Oh, you're right. Sorry. 
But Johnson, he's a little bit older of a prospect, 24 years old, but look, 6'4", 235 pounds. That's a beautiful size out of a front-end starter. Do I think he's a front-end starter? Mm, maybe a low-end number two, high-end number three starter. Hear that easy, 6'4", 235. Dash thinks you're beautiful. I'll tell you what. <laughs> he's had a lot, two good starts his last two outings. Unfortunately, given up five earned runs over these two outings. He got the W. Yeah, actually, his last outing on Friday, he, he went six innings, allowed 10 hits, four and runs, two walks with three Ks. That was one of his worst outings of the season. So maybe he has a, a couple more starts in him in the minor leagues before he gets called up. But this guy has dominating stuff, and he showed it throughout the minor leagues. His fastball is graded out at a 55. His curveball a 60, his cutter a 50, his changeup a 55, and his control is a 55. Although, I think all these grades are a little bit low for him. I think he plays a little bit better than that. His fastball can hit 94 mile an hour, and it has sync to it. It, it tells off a little bit. His changeup has sinking action to it, and he has an effective cutter too. So, he has four pitches he can use. And as you can tell, since he gets all this sink on his pitches, he's more of a ground ball pitcher. Although this season, he did let up six home runs already through 74 innings. But this is the, really the first time he showed that in the minor leagues. And I think it's more of a rarity, and you'll see that home run number come down. Right. Had a great 2014 in double A. Yeah, well, between single A, advanced, and double A in 2014, his ERA was a spectacular 213 through 143.2 innings pitched. He's hard to hit, just 101 hits in that span. And he had 132 Ks compared to 39 walks. So his control isn't a problem. In fact, in his career, he, he's allowed 97 walks and 308.1 innings. And that's a very nice number, especially out of a guy that you know is not gonna be a number one starter in your rotation. Yeah, that's like what, one walk every three innings roughly? Yeah, a little less than that. And that's really what you wanna see out of a starter. And the 289 Ks, he's keeping his K rate up there almost one per inning. Elite K rate. And look, a career 236 ERA. So he's pitched well all throughout the minors. Now, his pro debut only lasted a couple innings because a line drive broke bones in his face. Damn. See, here we go. Baseball players Damn. taking games off because they got broken face bones. Yeah. So his pro debut in 2012 a short only lasted 5.2 innings, like I was saying. But in 2013, he advanced through three levels. He started in rookie ball and ended up in A advanced and pitched to a 254 ERA, had 84 Ks in 85 innings. 35 walks was a little high, but he's worked on his control since then. And like you said, in 2014, he dominated. And this year, he was pitching very well before his last outing. In fact, he has six or more innings pitched in seven of his last eight starts, one earned run or less in five of his last eight starts, two walks or less in 11 of his 13 starts this season. And on May 29th against Louisville, he went six innings of perfect baseball. No hits, no one runs, no walks, had nine Ks, and that was just in 74 pitches. If he would have went the entire 100 pitches, 110 pitches, you might have seen him go eight innings, maybe even a full game. I'm not saying hit a went perfect, throughout that entire game though. But you could tell he's pitching well and he's just about ready for the bigs. He did have a little hiccup in his last start. And I, like I also mentioned, he let up six home runs already this season, but just 10 in his other 234.1 innings in the minors. So that's nothing I'd worry about. And really, if if you look at the Boston rotation, they're, they're not very good. They already called up Eduardo Rodriguez, who we did a prospect check segment on earlier this season. If you want to go check that out, you can. But really, he's their best pitcher. And the only other guy they have that's pitching semi-decent right now is Clay Buckholtz. And he's actually more of a number four starter these days. Do you think it's easier for a young pitcher or a young physician player to come up? It's probably easier for a hitter. If, it, if he's an advanced hitter, some guys get rushed through and it's a little bit harder for him. But if they're ready for the bigs, if it's a pitcher that's ready for the bigs and a pitcher that's or a hitter that's ready for the bigs, usually you see the hitter start off a little bit hotter while the pitcher, it might take them five, six starts, and then you start to see some a little bit of a turnaround from them. But really, he can't, even if he does get caught up and have 
a little bit of struggles. He can't do no worse than Wade Miley, Joe Kelly, or Percello. They Miley has the best ERA out of those three, and it's at 488. So, <laughs> I mean, you got to get this guy up there. They also have Henry Owens in the minor leagues, who's a top prospect. Actually, he's higher than Eduardo Rodriguez was and that Brian Johnson is. However, I always was committed to Eduardo Rodriguez as being the best of the three. And really, I think Brian Johnson might be the second best of the three. I'm not sold on Henry Owens. They're all big lefties. That's a little strange. They're gonna have, Their best three pitchers in their rotation are all going to be lefties. Dominant. But this guy, like Pedro's I said, not gonna be playing against shut the down Sox. Fielder, shut down all those left-handed batters. And look, a lot of scouts believe this guy is destined to be a number three pitcher. To me... I think he's a number two pitcher, and really, I would say number one, but he doesn't have one dominating pitch. He has multiple pitches that work very well, but look, like I said, he has a 236 ERA career in the minors, and look, opponents haven't hit better than 197 off of him in any season from 2012 to 2014. Now, this season, it's a little bit higher, but he is in triple A now, but he's still pitching well enough where he deserves to have a shot in this rotation right now. Especially how Boston's pitching has looked so far this season. Now, Boston's offense hasn't worked out very well this season either. Pablo Sandoval and Hanley Ramirez has been somewhat of a letdown for them, bringing them over this season. But they're starting to get a little bit hot. Hanley's picked it up a little bit. Mookie Betts is on fire right now. Yeah. Ortiz has picked it up a little bit as the season went After along. After getting benched. Anything can happen in that division still, too, I believe. Yeah, I don't think Boston's offense is the problem at all. If if they can get some pitchers in here, Eduardo Rodriguez is one. Buck Holtz is a back end of the rotation type guy. Get Brian Johnson up here right now. I know he had that hiccup, like we said. It doesn't matter. Call him up right now. Put him in the rotation. He's your number. He's your second best pitcher. And like you said, Easy, the division's wide open still. So bring him up and try to win this division. As long as it's not at A Rod's expense, just keep letting him hit home runs. That's all. Serving up meatballs <laughs> to the Venezuelans. <laughs> But look, Jose Peraza, I expect him to be up very soon. As soon as he gets accustomed to center field, and he should provide a spark for this Atlanta Braves team that's still in a division race. It's hard to say that because I thought they were going to be one of the worst teams in baseball this season, but they've proved to be a decent team. And Peraza, I expect him to be at the top of that lineup eventually, still in a ton of bases, have a low on-base percentage for you, but he can hit around 300. And then Brian Johnson, they need to call him up immediately, talking about the Boston Red Sox. Get him in this rotation. He's not going to be an ace. When you watch him pitch, you know he's not an ace, but he's a very good pitcher. And I would say he deserves to be in any rotation in the bigs. If Boston don't want to bring him up, we'll trade him to someone else who will pitch him in the bigs. Thanks, Dash, for coming in. Thanks, Easy, for stopping by. Thank you, fans, for listening. Fans, you can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You can follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check uh-huh. out the new website at thespreadnews.simplesite.com. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel.